Hi friends, John Haverstick here. I wanted to share with you a really cool retouching technique using the new generative fill function currently in the Adobe Photoshop beta. It's not in the full release yet, but uh, I'm, I'm sure it will be before too long. Of course, generative fill is, is the hot topic right now. Uh, I'm going to be using it in, in a retouching workflow to take care of the glare in this gentleman's glasses. Now, as a portrait photographer, this is something that I deal with a lot. And historically, I would use perhaps uh, frequency separation or maybe at the time of, of creating the images, have, you know, take the photo with the glasses on and then and have them not move their head and take the glasses off to take a photo of their eyes without the glasses that I can use to kind of piece together uh, in post using layers and masks and so on. But uh, generative fill, uh, I think is going to change that process for me. And I want you to see how simple this is. So um, basically what I'm going to do is just use my lasso tool and make a selection of that blue glare. And I'm going to kind of select a little, little wide of that, kind of select a little, an area a little bigger than the area that I need. And here in my floating contextual taskbar, I'll just click the generative fill button. Now, in this case, I'm not adding anything in from somebody else's image or anything like that. I, I don't want to enter any prompts in the text box here. I'm just going to go ahead and click the generate button. And in doing that, without any text prompts, uh, Photoshop's going to analyze the existing image and try and build uh, a replacement you know, within that uh, marching ant selection there that, that fits the image. All right. Well, that did a pretty remarkable job. Now, as with all cases of generative fill, you get variations here in this properties panel. So let's just tick on the, the variations here and see if we like any of them better. Uh, you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking the first one's probably the best one. We could do it again. We could click generative or generate again and see if it creates any better variations for us. But so far, I'm kind of liking the first one that it came up with. And we'll let that finish here. And we'll we'll still have the original three, but now we have three more to choose from. Let's see if it did any better the second round. No, I think our first one is still probably, probably the best uh, of those. No, uh, well, I don't know. That's got kind of a weird, maybe the second one. It had kind of a weird little line to the, uh, to the eyelid there. So let's do the other eye now. I'm going to go ahead and, again, make a, a loose selection of the blue glare there, leaving a little bit of the original image. Kind of, again, a loose selection. I'll click Generative Fill, and again, no prompts, no text prompts. Just click Generate and let it do its thing, and we'll see how well it does here. Now, keep in mind that Generative Fill is just another tool in our toolkit. Uh, it's not going to be a one-click magic bullet kind of thing, and, and it's all done with as far as uh, portrait retouching is concerned. But it can, as you see there, man, that's amazing. <laughs> you can see that it does a remarkable job at doing the bulk of the heavy lifting. Now, I might still have to go in with frequency separation or maybe a little bit of cloning or patching or something like that and take care of some of the, uh, some of the issues. But you know, for the most part, it did a really remarkable job with very little effort here. Now, I did notice that in the, the left eye here, it looks like we've got some, you know, some bloodshot eyes, some little vessels and things like that. So we might say, for example, add a hue saturation adjustment layer here on top of uh, our layer stack. Uh, let's choose reds and reduce the saturation and maybe increase the lightness just a little bit. Now you'll notice that uh, because this is an adjustment layer and, and it affects the entire layer, but because it's an adjustment layer, it has a mask that goes with it. Uh, with the mask being white, it's affecting the reds all throughout the image. But if I invert that mask by filling it with black, uh, invert, command or control I, that hides the effect of the hue saturation adjustment. And now I can just go in with uh, a white brush. I'll change my brush tool, make sure the foreground color is set to white. And I'm just going to paint back that area of the sclera that kind of wanted to desaturate a little bit. Now that looks a little funky there. I'm going to reduce the opacity of that layer just a little bit. Let some of the natural color show through there. Yeah, there we go. That feels better. So not as red, but I don't want to completely desaturate it because then the eyes go just gray, which looks weird. So anyway, uh, here's uh, where we started with the glare. There's where we ended with just a few quick clicks. Generative fill. Give it a try.